my name is Vinay and uh, in this video we will go through the experiment as up down counter so this is a simple 4 bit up down counter which is written, written in Verilog and here we can see that this is a Verilog code written over here so here is a module declaration these are declaration of the inputs here we have the output declared as an uh, counter name then we are using a temporary register named as counter up down okay so here we have written the always block so where we just check if reset now here we have checked that is the positive edge of the reset so that's why if the reset is true then we will make the counter go zero and as it is a pose edge of the reset that's why it will be a synchronous reset for the counter if you do not mention this if you remove this line then it will become synchronous reset for the counter so now if the reset is not true else of that so we check the up down okay so if up down is not true then we go up and else of that we go down so it's a simple up down counter in 4 bit okay so let's check the functionality first the simulation of it so for that you can select the test bench so here you can see this is the test, test bench written for the counter so in this test bench we just make the initial value of the clock go zero and uh, with every 5 nanosecond we just invert the clock so we will get a 10 nanosecond of clock period and uh, we just write a sequence of uh, inputs like reset we make it go zero after a while <clears throat> uh, uh, we go zero after a while and uh, we make the change of up down after 200 so let's simulate this so you select this counter test bench and you select this simulation and as I'm using a Xilinx IIC uh, software to simulate this so I just select this and say simulate behavioral model so the test bench will run and it will open another simulator so there we are okay so you can make it uh, zoom to full view so here you can see the results coming up now I just change the counter uh, radix to unsigned decimal so that we can uh, visualize the result much more easier okay unsigned decimal and I zoom a little bit okay and then I go to initial value so here you can see the clock is uh, toggling after every 5 10 a second okay and uh, we see the reset goes 0 after 20 okay and there you can see that after positive edge of the clock so it starts counting after the reset has gone 0 so it goes 1, 2, 3, 4 and it will keep on doing so on okay and this he is doing after every 10 in a second so after 200 you see that uh, this this thing is made uh, the up down is made uh, high so this is after 200 from 20 so that's why we can see that it comes after 220 okay so as you make it high the immediately clock is uh, clock is there but like he will only count after the positive edge of the clock so that's why we see the counter is still the value is 4 so after the positive edge of the clock he will start going downwards so it will start decrementing so 3 2 1 0 15 14 13 and so on so here we can see that this is working fine this is then working as a counter okay so you just exit the application if you want to see or something like that. Now uh, we will just synthesize this code and see how does it work. So you have to click again implementation and you have to select the counter code. Okay. Then you can say synthesize. I'm I'm using a Spartan 3 series at PJ for implementation. So I will just do till here, synthesize the result and see what it comes. So here if you want you can see the synthesis result on the bottom console or you can open a separate one. So here you can see that this is the maximum operating frequency of the design. So this is 336 megahertz. Maybe I can just copy this and open a notepad and store there. So this is for a 4-bit counter, it's 336 megahertz. Okay. Then you can see the maximum input arrival time and uh, maximum output required time. Okay. So all these results are being mentioned over here. Okay. You can even see that what are the uses risk report of this design. That is how many number of flip flops you are using. So this is for 
Now that is correct because if it's 4 bit counter, so obviously it should have only 4 flip flops to be used. Okay. Now if you are interested, you can even see the technological schematic of it. So you can just execute this part and select this, start with the schematic of the top level block. So I can remove this. Yeah. So there you can see this is a top level schematic of the block. It has clock, reset, up, down, input, and the output as the counter. So if you double click and go inside, so we just zoom it. So this is how it shows the technology schematic of the design. So here you can see this is a flip flop 1, 2, 3, and 4. So these are four flip flops used by the design to implement the flip flop counter. And uh, they are the lookup table. So if you go inside, this is SW0. Okay, it shows the technology scattering inside. Let's see which one we can see. Okay, result 3. Oh, yeah, this one. There we go. So here you can see this is the lookup table for the first flip flop. That is, uh, uh, you can see the uh, LSB of it. So here you can see that this guy has implemented an uh, XOR gate for the lowest one. So here you have one input of the LSB and one input coming from the next uh, LSB of it. That is, this is LSB0, this is LSB1. Okay. So he has made an XOR gate out of that because that's how the LSB works. So it toggles whenever the MSB, the next MSB is I mean like LSB is one. Okay. So if you put a zero over here, so zero will go to this one and this end result would be zero. So uh, if this is also zero, then this also will be zero and the net result would be zero. Now, let's say if it's zero and this is one, okay? Zero and one, okay? So in that case, so this zero will go here and will turn out to one and this one going to this one. So one, one, the and result would be one and R will give one. So that will be one, that will be stored, okay? So that's how, I mean, you can go inside, you can even see the equations out of it. You can see the third table and uh, you can see the kind of map, all the results you can see in the Xilinx IC software, okay? The same way is there is uh, look up table of each of them so these are more complex uh, three input xor gate but this is how it is they have made it okay so this they have implemented using everything as lookup table okay you can go inside you can see the schematic of it so this is four bit and you can see the equations you can see the third table and kind of art. okay now all the user who wish to make uh, uh, this as 32 bit counter because in some syllabus they mentioned this has to be 32 bit. So you can just make it 31 and this you can make it 31 and this instead of 4 this will become 32. This will become 32. This will become 32. And that's it. And let's save this file and run the synthesis again. So okay, this is the name. Name remains 4 bit, that doesn't matter, this will not impact much. Okay. But here we can see that how it has impacted on the maximum operating frequency. If I just copy this part and place it on my notepad. So here you can see the 4-bit counter was operating at more than 300 megahertz, whereas a 32-bit counter is operating less than 200 megahertz. So there is impact on the maximum operating frequency. That is uh, because the number of uh, bits have increased and the critical part delay would be much more slower as compared to 4 bit counter. Okay, so this is how the result comes. And uh, if the users are interested, you, you can see the the implementation result after the place in route 2. So you can just implement the design. It will take just a minute or so. Okay, so he has compiled the entire design implemented. Okay, so here this is the critical part delay. So this is the best achievable timing. This is 5.25 nanosecond. 
So there is a clock frequency or the clock period. Okay. So if the user wants, they can analyze the timing research. Okay. So here it mentions that what is the source. So this is a maximum clock to setup path. So this is four nanoseconds. Okay. And for all clock to pad delays, so these are the delays given. Then clock to setup. So the clock source is considered as clock input on which the counter is working. So this is the clock to setup part delay which he has mentioned. This is around 5.25 nanosecond. Okay. So this results you can print in your reports and show it. Okay. So that is the end of the counter experiment.